Yeah. One last question. Suppose, Lord Russell, this film were to be looked at by our descendants, like a Dead Sea Scroll in a thousand years' time. What would you think it's worth telling that generation about the life you've lived and the lessons you've learned from it? I should like to say two things. One intellectual and one moral. The intellectual thing I should want to say to them is this. When you are studying any matter or considering any philosophy, ask yourself only what are the facts and what is the truth that the facts bear out. Never let yourself be diverted either by what you would wish to believe or by what you think would have beneficent social effects if it were believed. But look only and solely at what are the facts. That is the intellectual thing that I should wish to say. The moral thing I should wish to say to them is very simple. I should say, love is wise, hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way. And if we are to live together and not die together, we must learn a kind of charity and a kind of tolerance, which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet. upbringing did your father give you? Oh, we were Swiss reformed. And did he make you attend church regularly? Oh, well, that was quite natural. Yes. Everybody went to, 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 to church yes. on Sunday. And did you believe in God? Oh, yes. Do you now believe in God? Uh, now? <laughs> Difficult to answer. I know. I, need, I don't need to believe. I know. I need to know. What do you need to know? I want to learn. I want to understand. Be careful. What do you call learning? If it means storing up experiences and beliefs, it will tie you like a cord and prevent you from knowing. Knowing happens directly. When not even a thought stands between you and the thing you know. Then you see yourself as you are, not as you would like to be. Now, before I give you the last word, I want you to listen to three most lovely lines which I quote from one of your own poems. The great sins and fires break out of me like the leaves from the bough in the violent spring. I am a walking fire. I am all leaves. Damien, what is that great fire? What is the living thing which all your life has been trying to break out of you? The great fire, I suppose, is a humble but unworthy love of God and certainly a great love of humanity. And the, uh, to be an artist is a terribly painful thing. I mean, the great leaves uh, break out of me. You see, one has a perpetual resurrection in one's life as the art returns to one after long deadness. You see. And, of course, the fire's always fighting the sins, and, well, there one is.
do you have a bodyguard? Do you have... <laughs> no. You don't? I got one bodyguard. He has no eyes, though he sees. He has no ears, though he hears. He remembers everything with the aid of mind and memory. When he wishes to create a thing, he just orders it to be and it comes into existence. But this order is not conveyed in words which takes a tongue to formulate or with sound carries ears. He hears the secrets of those on the quiet thoughts. He stops those whom, who's that? That's God, Allah. He's my bodyguard. He's your bodyguard. He's the supreme. <laughs> oriented in this direction. And I think we, for fat women, really, I would say, for us, it's important to realize, really, that uh, to overcome the separateness from one individual and the other, to bridge it by love. And uh, I think uh, this probably is, is uh, for us the goal here of the integration process and perhaps a universal love later on. But finally, we, men and women must realize both. You know very well what our principle is, that man is our only half-developed being. That whatever education he has, he remains only half-developed. This potential in him has got to come out. And the way we live at the present time just doesn't make this possible. The first thing for getting this potential out is to know it. One must know that one's got it. Not from somebody else, one must know it from oneself. One must know that there are springs inside oneself that are not yet flowing. I mean, one must have the positive with the negative. One must take away illusions, but one must also give hope. And this possibly is what the world most needs this present, I'd have a genuine hope for the future. People who are honestly working on their own inner problem in their own way are builders of a new temple and it takes 600 years because that means it takes as long till we are fully in the Aquarian age mm -hmm. and then it will probably come out what was building itself up. But one must not want it with one's mind or head, or mm. want to organize it. <laughs> one must let that happen. That's a dream which would compensate feeling a bit lonely, feeling a bit an outsider. And the conscious says to him, no, no, do your own job and you are one of the builders. Uh -huh. Hermes Trismegistus said in, in one active imagination to an alchemist, I am the friend of whoever is lonely. The unconscious doesn't speak to you when you are with people. Your attention goes to the people. Mm -hmm. Well, when you are lonely, I've lived in this tower sometimes three weeks alone without speaking to one word to anybody. And I sometimes thought I was going off my head. Mm -hmm. But the unconscious became alive. Mm -hmm. It was my partner. And that's why you have to be lonely so that the unconscious becomes stronger you it's like loading up the unconscious and then it manifests and then you are not lonely anymore so we have to support the unconscious it's not enough to to just have it we have to actively turn towards it and support it so that it then helps us So you are asking me a direct question, I do not know, but I was there, it was very spontaneous, it was very spontaneous, I could not, I had no background also, didn't do any meditation, 
didn't read any book. I was in Pakistan, therefore these books were not available because they were in Sanskrit. I had not studied Sanskrit, I studied Persian. It came to me, how, I do not know. Perhaps it has chosen me. It has chosen me. That's <laughs> the truth reveals to a holy person and I did not have any qualification. I was not educated at that time. Eight years, second standard. So I didn't know. Still I am saying, what is it, what is it, what is it? Each time I am more in love with it. Every moment. <laughs> 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 